Welcome to a presentation of the Ring of the Green, Soames' second English settlement. I'm Dr. David Weed, coordinator of the Soames Heritage Area Project, and I'll be your host for this presentation. The 1862 date on the welcome sign for the city of East Providence may mislead people into thinking that the city is only a little more than 150 years old, when in fact its colonial roots go back 380 years and its original inhabitants over 10,000 years. In fact, the origins of the city of East Providence go back almost 340 years and include the establishment of English settlements in 1643, only a few years after the city of Providence was begun by Roger Williams in 1636. Let's take a look at the 17th century history of this city. What we now call East Providence was once called Soams by the first people to occupy the area over the past 10,000 years until the arrival of Europeans. Evidence shows that they lived very well and were described as healthier than the Europeans who visited them for trade. At the time that Europeans first arrived, the native people in this land were led by the great leader Massasoit or Osamequin who spent most of his time in a settlement within the area where the town of Warren, Rhode Island is now. In fact, when Osamequin died in 1661, he was buried in a grave in what is now Burrs Hill Park in Warren. The Massasoit Osamequin led over 60 tribes and subtribes in a region called Poconocut that extended from Narragansett Bay to Cape Cod and north to the Charles River. The settlement known as Soames included today's cities of Providence and East Providence, but also Barrington, Warren, and Bristol, Rhode Island, and Rehoboth, Seekonk, and Swansea, Massachusetts. Following the King Philip War of 1675-76, his tribe began to be referred to as Wampanoag, though the Massasoit never heard that name. Though explorers and traders frequented the coast, the first permanent European settlement did not occur until late in 1620 with the arrival of the Mayflower, which brought 102 men, women, and children who intended to live there permanently. With the help of Samoset, who had learned a smattering from English sailors along the main coast, the Massasoit met with the Pilgrims on March 22, 1621, to negotiate a treaty that would guarantee that each would help the other. The treaty lasted for the next half century and guaranteed the survival of the colonists at Plymouth. In 1625, Plymouth settler William Blackstone, or now called Blackstone, moved to Shawmut, the present-day Boston Commons, and then to present-day Cumberland, Rhode Island, in 1635, selling his land to Mass Bay colonists who had first settled in Charlestown, Massachusetts. Ten years later, a man named Roger Williams arrived in Plymouth after traveling from London where he grew up to Boston, a town that had just been established by the Massachusetts Bay Company. After two years in Plymouth, Williams moved to Salem where he served as a minister until the ideas he was preaching began to enrage the leaders in Boston. In January 1636, they decided to send him back to London, but he escaped from his house in Salem and walked over 60 miles through the woods in the dead of winter to reach the settlement of Soames, where Williams met with a Massasoit who he had befriended while in Plymouth. Arriving in Soames in poor health, Williams was sheltered for 14 weeks by the Massasoit, where a member of the Poconoka tribe known as Margaret nursed him back to health. The rock shelter where Williams was thought to have recovered is located on private property in Swansea, just north of the Warren, Rhode Island town line. This was likely part of a winter settlement that Osamequin and members of the Poconoka tribe occupied in the winter months as it was sheltered from the northwest winds by a large rock outcropping. By April, Williams was well enough to travel and the Massasoit suggested that he settle at Seekonk Cove now Omega Pond, along the Seekonk River in today's East Providence, where there was a spring. He was joined by his wife and child and a few of his followers from Salem, who began a settlement there. 
Though now cut off from the Seekonk River, the pond can be seen today along Roger Williams Avenue, and a monument sits at the site of the spring a few hundred yards north of Wilson Avenue. The settlement and the area around it was called Seekonk, the native name for the black geese whose habitat included the cove. The geese can be seen on today's seal for the town of Seekonk. In June, Williams received word from Pilgrim leader Edward Winslow that he was still within Plymouth's territory and must remove across the Seekonk River to land he was able to purchase from Narragansett leader Canonicus. Other settlers began to occupy the land that Williams was forced to abandon. With Williams' help, a group of Charlestown residents launched another settlement at Seekonk Cove in 1638, but by 1640, most had joined the colony of Providence. Settling on the east bank of the Mashasic River, Williams laid out a town, providing housing lots that stretched from Town Street along the river, up the hill past present-day Benefit Street. The location can be seen at the Roger Williams National Memorial and Visitor Center at North Main Street and Smith Street in downtown Providence. In 1641, Plymouth Governor Winslow and one of his assistants, John Brown, purchased an eight-mile square tract of land from the Massasoit. Today, that tract includes East Providence, Seekonk, Rehoboth, and parts of Pawtucket. In 1642, citing land shortages, some of the residents of Weymouth moved to Rehoboth on the Rhode Island border with their minister, Reverend Samuel Newman. Many writers believe the move came because of religious differences. Newman, an Episcopalian, took about 40 families with him to what was called Seekonk, now East Providence. He signed the deed to the land at the home of Roger Williams, who had moved to the area seven years earlier and had a good relationship with the Massasoit Osamequin. They set up a town around a central common with farms radiating out to the surrounding rivers. Each settler had access to the town common in the center for their animals, a woodlot, and access to water. The area became known as the Ring of the Green. A meeting house was constructed in the center of the green from 1646 to 1648, and the population soon climbed to well over 200. In 1645, Newman changed the name of the settlement from Seekonk to Rehoboth, and Plymouth Colony began to assume control of the town. Rehoboth leader John Brown and his son-in-law, Thomas Willett, purchased nearby Wanamoiset from Massasoit for 15 pounds. The area was then incorporated into Swansea in 1667, and eventually into East Providence as Riverside in 1747. A marker on the line separating Old Rehoboth from Wanamoiset, now Riverside, sits on the west side of Pawtucket Avenue, north of the entrance to the Silver Spring Golf Course. Brown died in 1662 and was issued a crest and a coat of arms in England. He was buried in Little Neck Cemetery near Bullock's Cove in Riverside. He was described by Thomas Bayliss as, quote, a man of great piety highly esteemed in the colony, and being so near the Indians by whom he was greatly regarded, his death is a serious loss. Newman's famous concordance to the Bible was the third in English ever published, and greatly superior to its two predecessors. The first edition was published in London in 1643, just before Newman's removal from Weymouth to Rehoboth. The second edition was published at Cambridge in 1662, and the concordance was usually known after that as the Cambridge Concordance. The concordance was still being reprinted at least as late as 1889. Members of the Newman Church elected to collect funds to pay a teacher for the settlement's children. Children had to be taught how to read so they could study the Bible and prepare for future conversion. The original 1646 meeting house was replaced in 1680, then again in 1718, and the current structure was built in 1810 
and then raised over a basement and enlarged. A cemetery across Newman Avenue contains the graves of some of the earliest Rehoboth settlers, including William Carpenter, who died in 1658, and Reverend Samuel Newman, who died in 1663. Though the 40 houses that stood around the Ring of the Green were all burned in King Philip's War, two houses constructed shortly afterwards still stand. The Nathaniel Daggett House at 74 Roger Williams Avenue and a house at 1527 Pawtucket Avenue, described as the oldest dwellings in the vicinity of the Ring of the Green. Built around 1700, it was originally a typical two-story, three-bay and chimney early colonial house with one room on each floor. The Philip Walker House at North Broadway and Massasoit Avenue is noted as the earliest house in Rhode Island built completely of mill-sawn timbers. It was once thought to be the second oldest house in Rhode Island, but continuing investigation, including a dendrochronology study to date the year of the trees used to build the house were felled, leads to the 1724 date of construction now assigned to it. The 1750 Caleb Abel House, located at 66 Greenwood Avenue, was built on the original foundation of a 1643 house that was burned during the King Philip's War. Supposedly, King Philip dragged a chair out of this house and sat in front of it to watch the Ring of the Green burn in 1676. The circa 1760 Abel House at 8 Greenwood Avenue was also built on the foundation of a house that was burned during the King Philip War. In addition to the 17th century houses in East Providence, four houses in Old Rehoboth, the Kingsley House at 108 Davis Street from 1680 is the oldest in present-day Rehoboth. The oldest two-room portion of the Post and Beam Wheeler Ignals House at 51 Summer Street may have been built before 1710 by Samuel Millard. The Nathan Bliss House at 13 Locust Avenue, just south of the Carpenter Museum in the village, was built as a single structure dating back to 1650. The Abaya Bliss House at 154 Agricultural Avenue has a complex construction his history, which may begin as early as 1666. Architectural evidence suggests that it was built before 1740, so it is one of the oldest surviving buildings in Rehoboth. The Hicks-Baxter Homestead at 63 Brook Street, formerly at the corner of an active farmstead and grist mill, was built in 1700 to 1730, though claimed to have been built in 1698. The William H. Hunt House was constructed on 30 acres of land at 385 Jacob Street in today's Seekonk, which was Rehoboth in 1690. Brigham Farm, which sits along the east side of the Turner Reservoir in East Providence, remains as one of the few undeveloped parts of the city and contains the Newman Oak Tree that is thought to be over 400 years old. In the 1643 Rehoboth Purchase, a series of mills were first located along the Ten Mile River by Stephen Payne as early as 1645. In 1671, Israel Sabin and Mr. Payne were operating four mills on this site, a sawmill, grist mill, and fulling mill, and dye house. The site off Pleasant Street is the location of the East Providence Historical Society. Other 17th century sites in Rehoboth include Butterworth Falls on Perryville Dam, Burial Place Hill at Providence and Peckham Streets, the 1690 Bliss Grist Mill, located just south of the Blanding Library, and a marker for one of two early Rehoboth garrison houses along Barney Road that sheltered settlers during the King Philip War in 1675. The site of the First Baptist Church in Massachusetts is located along George Street, just south of the Rehoboth Line near Fort Town Farm in today's Barrington. This church's members split off of the 1643 Newman Church in 1663, having called the Reverend John Miles from Swansea, Wales to be their pastor. 
The church and surrounding houses were all burned at the start of the King Philip War. A cemetery with the graves of some of those who died in the King Philip War can be found a few hundred yards south along Warren Avenue in Swansea at telephone pole number 33 and is marked only by a chain across the entrance to a path leading to the burial site. Over the 17th century, the English population grew while the Indian population continued to decline. Indian land was eventually reduced to the Bristol Peninsula as more land was sold to the colonists. In the 1670s, more frequent encroachments by colonial cows and pigs occurred on native land, and the English began trying and punishing Indian crimes and demanded that the Indians turn over their guns. In June 1645, the Massachusetts Sun, Matacomet, led a 14-month bloody uprising of Poconocut, Nipmuc, Pocomtuck, and Narragansett Indian tribes known as King Philip's War. Mohegan, Pequot, Massachusetts, and Nauset Indians sided with the English. It was the bloodiest conflict in American history. Fifty-two English towns were attacked, a dozen were destroyed, and more than 2,500 colonists died, perhaps 30% of the English population of New England. At least twice that many of 5,000 Native Americans alive before the war were killed. As this map shows, over 14 months the war had spread through Rehoboth all the way to Deerfield and into Connecticut and eventually into Maine. The war ended in August of 1676 with the death of King Philip at the hands of praying Indian John Alderman and Colonel Benjamin Church, and the capture and hanging of Chief Anawan in Rehoboth. The Indians who survived the war were either driven out, captured, and enslaved, or killed on sight. Houses like the Philip Walker House and the Robert Abel House near the Ring of the Green that were burned in the war were rebuilt. In 1692, Old Rehoboth became part of Bristol County, Massachusetts, and in 1812, Rehoboth and Seekonk were separated, with East Providence separated from Seekonk in 1862. Today, members of the Seekonk and Poconoka tribes continue to live in the area occupied by their ancestors, while the land on the Ring of the Green is now occupied by descendants of the original settlers of the English colonists and those who have followed them. In 380 years, the colonial Ring of the Green has been transformed into the city of East Providence. Evidence of that transformation can still be found now that you now know where to look.